Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is C-Raptor and today we're continuing our look at the Tier 8 aircraft carriers available in World of Warships with a look at Tier 8 premium German carrier, Graf Zeppelin. Few ships in the game have quite the checkered history and troubled story in her past that Graf Zeppelin does. And for many, many moons now, ever since the rework, I've kind of written this ship off as not very good. And yet this game taught me, well, it taught me a lot about Graf Zeppelin. This is the first time I've played Zeppelin in a long time, probably since right after the rework. She used to be one of my favorite carriers in the old RTS system. But in this iteration, what I loved most about her, her giant AP bombs, has basically been neutered. And we're going to talk more about that later in the video. To the point where now her torpedoes are really her big strong suit, although you can get really good work out of these rockets as well. Spawning here onto the south, what is this, the southeast corner of Shards. I, uh, I take the rockets out early, as you tend to, with a carrier kind of scouting the enemy team, looking for some, uh, some early, early damage, maybe an early destroyer run you can take. I did do a pre-drop there. These planes are fragile. Zeppelin is, her quirk, her main thing is her planes are pretty quick. They're pretty fast to zip around the map, which is beneficial in a game on a 42 by 42 map here like Shards. It means I can be, I can be back over the battlefield very quickly from just about anywhere. But I don't seem to spot a, a destroyer out here leading this Lenin. That's kind of what I was looking for. That's what I was thinking I was going to find. But now you see somebody's capping B. And so I'm like, well, we know exactly what to do here. Let's go scope it out. And the enemy lightning has failed to disable his AA. So I know exactly where he is. Now, these the German rockets are uh, basically tiny Tims. They have a lot of penetration. They do they hit decently hard. And you put eight rockets downrange. Each plane, each one of those planes in that double run carries four, four rockets. So I put a bunch of rockets into that reticle. Unfortunately, I only ding with one of them. It's enough for a small reset and a little bit of chip damage, but that's about all I get out of it. But that's not really what I'm after right now. Now that I know that that, that Lenin down here on the two line is pretty much all by himself, it's time to bust out the sh time to bust out the, the thing that makes Zeppelin fun to play, and that is her torpedo bombers. I do get a pre-drop in here because I don't want to be throwing away too many planes this early. And um, we're going to go in for a run on this Lenin. Now, he does put his spider, his fighter plane up, but he does it too late. It takes that plane several seconds to get on station and get ready and then start detecting me, and by then, I got my torpedoes in the water, I pull the whole squadron out, and it looks like I take a couple of losses there, but nothing nothing catastrophic. Now, one of the things I want to point out as I go in for another run uh, with the torpedo bombers over here, this, yes, this is starting off as an understrength squadron, but that's okay, because I'm only going to go in for one drop anyway. You see where my hull position is. I started spawned back by that island, kind of back along the IJ line, back in like I-8 or so. I set my waypoint up here on the south side of this island in about H-2. I'm being pretty aggressive with this hull. Part of that is because of how I have Zeppelin, this particular Zeppelin spec. I'll talk about that in a sec. I want to, drop, want to talk about this drop. I came over here to drop on the Lenin, but I saw this Turpitz. And the reason I'm, I'm dropping on him at this point is I'm trying to turn him around. I know where my, I know where I want to be. I know where my hull is going. I see where my team is going. I want to encourage that Turpitz to put himself somewhere else. I'm going to put, I'm going to get all three of those torpedoes into him. He's going to take about 10k or so, and uh, that is going to convince him to be to be somewhere else, which is fine by me. So I grab the torpedoes once again. I'm just going to keep harassing these guys with these torpedo bombers for a while because these planes move back to the carrier so quickly. They jump off the deck, and and I can just I can literally just these guys are so close to me. They're within what about 12 kilometers or so from my hull position. I can just spam the crap out of these things and make these guys really sorry they're this close. But anyways, my hull. My hull position is, is set in about H2, and what you're going to see happen over the next few minutes is I, as I move around this island here off my starboard side, they're actually going to have a few shots at me, and my team gets a little nervous about this. Zeppelin, Zeppelin can take some damage. I'm not saying you can be careless with the ship, because you absolutely can't. Like, don't do that. But you can take some risks with this hull, especially against non-battleships that you might be surprised with. The other thing that I've done with this Zeppelin is that I have her spec'd partially for secondaries. Zeppelin's secondary suite is brutal. Absolutely punishing. And if you find yourself in, you know, in a, in a medium range fight with, let's say, an enemy cruiser, chances are you're going to beat him because your secondaries are so good. They have an inherent accuracy bonus and you have a lot of them. So what I've done on this particular build of Zeppelin, I am running not only AFT on my captain for the extra secondary range, but I'm also running secondary mod uh, in the in the upgrade slot three 
for exactly the same reason I want the extra range on my secondaries. So you see now that I'm around this island cover, I'm spotted. The turpit's over on the one line taking a shot at me. The Massachusetts is about to put 10k or so into me here. And in a moment, I'm get, but in a moment I'll have cover. And the Sien Yang, I have a friendly destroyer. You're gonna you're gonna catch some of this in a minute. He does lay a smoke screen for me, which is really really awesome. Even though I was I didn't need to, he didn't need to do that, but it's it's awesome that he did. With all these battleships down here, I look at this Lenin. Look at this Lenin. He's got 1700 HP. He's spotted. We need somebody to shoot him, right? But unfortunately, I, I took, this is a mistake on my part. I took the torpedo bombers out. I saw where the Massachusetts was. I saw the angle he had on my position, and I thought, I need to get this guy. I need to get this guy. So I pull out the torpedo bombers. I go for a run on the Massachusetts. I'm not going to get, this is a terrible run. I don't get much out of it. You see there that the Sien Yang smoking me up into position as the, the Cleveland puts a few shells into me. And even the enemy, look at this, the enemy Lex is coming over for a strike. This is something you're going to see the Lexington do over the next four to five minutes. He's going to continually bring planes over to try and kill me. Every single time, he will fail. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to get a lot of plane kills this match. A moment ago, I took out the dive bombers, and we're going to talk more about the dive bombers in a minute. I took them out thinking I could try and strike the Cleveland, but no, that that obviously did not occur. So uh, with the Massachusetts there, the AA is simply too much. So I reach for the torpedo bombers once again, and now you see the Massachusetts is pulling out. The timing of this is just about perfect. I'm going to have a beautiful shot at him as he as he tries to turn out of here and get across and get across my reticle. Unfortunately, he has a fighter up. I'm going to take a few losses there, but we pull those guys out and immediately come right back out with the rockets. Now, my thinking is I was going to get a flood on him there. It didn't. He ate two torps for some solid damage. But I really want to try and get a fire on this guy. But remember, these, these German rocket planes are pretty fragile. I'm going to lose a few of these guys on the way in. And these are, again, these are the German equivalent of Tiny Tim's. Watch this hit. About 7k. You could get really good work out of these rockets, especially against cruisers and lighter units. Ah, the enemy Lexington coming back for more. Well, take the torpedoes off the deck. You drop a fighter, and uh, we'll let him have fun with that. Friendly Sien Yang has got some really, really good deep water torpedoes downrange on this Massachusetts. He's about to eat several of these, and I'm going to put some torpedoes in the water just to make sure we get that guy. I'm done with him. Don't want to deal with him anymore. And my torpedoes are going to arm just in time as he pops a heel, and we'll get him off the board. Remember that Lenin that was on 1700 HP? Yeah, he's still clinging back, clinging to life back there on about 10,000 now, as we do pull the dive bombers off the deck. Now, this is what I used to love about Graf Zeppelin, these big AP bombs. But they have neutered these bombs to the point that they are nearly useless. It's really frustrating. Uh, one of my clanmates said that they likened these bombs to, to like a slot machine, right? You put money in a slot machine, you pull the lever, and maybe you get lucky. And that's literally how you have to treat you have to treat Graf Zeppelin's dive bombs. Maybe you get lucky. Chances are you won't. They're incredibly unreliable. If you do manage to land something, you get a decent hit. You, I've never seen more than one bomb hit usually, uh, but you can sometimes get a citadel. And the citadels hurt. They're about 10k. I pull the rockets back off the deck. I want this Cleveland gone, but in my haste to charge him and get up in his face and crush him with my tiny Tims, I completely miss this fighter squadron that I'm about to drive through, and it's going to cost me a whole bunch of airplanes. Look at that squadron melt. Look at that. Fighters and flak and everything else. I do survive somehow, manage to get and put four rockets down on that guy, but at least the Massachusetts gets him. Phew. The pace of this game has been relentless. We're not even nine minutes in. There's 11 dead ships. And we're 100 points down as a friendly Benson is trying to pick up B. I'm going to go pick on this Turpitz up here off my, uh, just off here, off by himself, kind of hanging out at the end of the B cap. And I'm going to blow, I'm going to make a mistake here. You see here, I'm going up the two line. It doesn't register to me that this Turpitz is trying to turn out and come this direction. I should have cut in and dropped him over that island as he, as he turned to the west. And I would have had a beautiful angle because he's turning to escape all of these ships that are in the A-cap. Instead, I come way out here on the two line and try to crumb in from him this way. He's turning into me, so this is already going to be a crap drop. And I know this, and I do it anyway. I put him in the water. I pull the planes out. I don't want to waste any more time with that. I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to get anything out of that, and it's fine. That's a mistake on my part. Well, I do get it. You get a torpedo. Look at that. We're upside down on health, tied on ships, upside down on caps here, approaching the halfway mark of the match. The enemy Lexington coming back once again to play. You see they're bringing a torpedo squadron down. But my AA's up and chewing away. I've, often, I've you know, got my combat air patrol. I left another fighter. He's um, he's determined. I do pull the, my squadron back so I can get back and focus my AA up. And between the fighters and my AA, not a single one of these planes is going to survive to get a torpedo into the water. 
Not sure why the Lexington is so determined to kill me. I guess because he thinks I mean, I'm on 20,000. I'm only on 20,000 HP. It would only take a couple of good strikes, but he's not exactly having a lot of luck getting those strikes through. In the lift. Once again, our friendly Sin Yang has done a brilliant job with that torpedo strike. Look at that. The Turpits took one deep water torpedo on the stern for a flood. And in a minute, when we get closer to him, you're going to see he's on fire in a couple of places. So this drop is probably a waste of my time. But I came all this way to make it, and I want to make sure we get this guy off the board. I do not want to chance him having a heal and somehow miraculously finding a way to survive this. So I put the Torps in the water, pull that squadron out, and we'll... Go back to the map menu. map view here as we start trying to reorganize my hull position. One of the things that I've been trying to work on in my carrier game, my various carrier games, is I've been intentionally trying to improve my hull position. Stay up with my team, be a little more aggressive, and so on. But the trick is, is that sometimes that, that, that can get you into trouble. I've had more than one game where I've lost my hull, you know, because I was <laughs> someplace I shouldn't have been or got a little overly aggressive. Um... In this instance, it does get me into some trouble. I do take some damage over the course of this game. I'll take about 40,000 damage before the game's all told. But in the end, it works out because those are shots that they're not taking at my team. They're taking them at me. And sometimes that doesn't bother me so much, especially in this ship that can take a little bit of hits. I've grabbed the unreliable dive bombers again. Um, one of the things that I've learned about these these dive bombers, and on the recommendation from another uh, another streamer, member of my, my stream team, TM Grunty, I'll put a link to his stream, stream down below. You should check him out. He's got a lot more experience in carriers than I do. Um, Grunty noted to me that the dive bombers, because they're kind of mediocre, they make really good scout planes. They're super fast. They've a, they're a decent amount of health. and they're, they, But they're, the speed is really everything. They're faster than the rocket planes. And um, sure enough, here I go in for a dive bomb run on this Chapayev and get a ricochet believe it or not. Yep. Feels pretty awful. And, um, yeah, I don't waste my time with that as I bring those guys back. I'm, again, I'm adjusting my hull position. I'm waiting for this Lex to try and get his strike in. I'm focusing my A. As you look there, he's fed me enough planes that I now have an AA Defense Expert medal in my Graf Zeppelin. Okay. Sien Yang doing brilliant job again with his deepwater torpedoes wiping out that Bismarck. And, honestly, Doing me a solid, saving my bacon a little bit. A few more salvos, that Bismarck probably would have had me off the board. We're way up on ships now, still upside down on caps, as I'm going to keep pushing towards the center of the map. There's only a few ships left, the Lex, the Chapayev, and the enemy Lo Yang. We know the Lo Yang was last spotted in B, so we'll reach for the rockets and see what we can find. These rockets, incidentally, will do good work against either ship. I'm going to go out here looking for the Chapayev first. Dump a little fighter cover here. For my friend, for my team, also helps to cover me a little bit because it's off my port bow. That's the direction I'm steaming. So if he decides he wants to bring in a strike, he'll have to get through that fighter. I know that Chapayev was on the backside of this island. Let's swing around here and see if we can spot him. And again, I'm just I know I know these rockets will do good work. So just want to see if I can put put some into this guy. And oh, I'm sorry, I have the torpedoes. I have the torpedoes. Oh, okay. Well, he's um a little caught out here. He's stationary. Chapayev doesn't exactly move very fast. All I got to do is lead these right. And we'll see what we can get out of them. Those look pretty good. I might, I probably should get at least one. Now I grab the rockets. I had the order wrong. So presuming the Chapayev eats at least one torpedo, he does. The rockets should be enough to finish him off. But as, as chance has it, my team takes care of the problem. As there's just now the Lo Yang sitting in the B cap, holding it down from the Massachusetts. I don't want this Massachusetts to get up here and 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 be a be a nuisance. I don't want him to get. I don't want him to get uh, dev struck by this low Yang. So we're gonna try and help him out and get this low Yang off the board before we get there. One of the things that I've learned about Zeppelin's rockets, the, the speed of these planes means that Zeppelin is one of the few rocket squadrons in the mid, in the mid, the high tiers basically that can can get a strike off as uh, when you spot a care uh, a destroyer that has its AA turned off. You have the ability to slow down your plane slow enough that you can still get that strike off. You saw me do it just there. I flipped around and managed to get this low Yang off the board. Is that just going to leave the enemy Lexington? So this was a fairly quick game now. We're coming up on 15 minutes, and uh, it's been a bit of a bloodbath. Game is, is largely over. We'll finish capping B here. The Lex might we'll come over here and pick up some damage off this, this Cleveland and this Bismarck, who, to their credit, have banded together for, for solid AA protection, and that's going to work to their benefit. I'm going to go in for one last Torp Strike on the Lex. It's, it's not going to get anything because... I make a mistake here. You see, I'm kind of approaching from a stern angle, right? Kind of coming in at about a 60 degree angle off his hull. But I'm used to making this drop perpendicular. What's going to happen is I'm not going to lead these torpedoes enough. These torpedoes are slow. And from this angle, they're having to kind of play catch up, right? 
He literally is going to outrun those. So things I learned about Graf Zeppelin in this in this game and have, have been learning about her overall. One, the rockets can do some really good work, but the planes are fragile, so you have to you have to pick and choose your targets. They also her plane regeneration rates are not awful. About 70 seconds per plane. That gives her moderately decent reserves. She doesn't have like Kaga reserves, but they're okay. Her torpedoes, though, are where the bread her bread and butter are. That's what's her really gonna get her work in. And her torpedo pot her planes, the speed of her planes mean that she can be in all kinds of places at once, well, not at once, but all kinds of places all over the map at, and speed, with a speed that, that you sometimes don't appreciate until you, you, you play it compared to another carrier. If I was to play this game again, that same game as a Lexington, it would be radically different. Radically different, because the Lexington's planes are so much slower. Anyway, guys, I mean, this is, a, this is not a great game damage-wise. I you know, about 60k or so, but from an XP perspective, I kept the enemy carrier busy. I chewed up a lot of his planes. I secured a couple of kills. Those ships probably would have died without me, but it's okay. It works, and I put really solid damage into some of these battleships with the torpedoes, which I'm learning is Zeppelin's real bread and butter. The key things, again, to take away, rockets, treat them like American Tiny Tims, and you'll get some good work out of them. Uh, use the torpedoes as, as often as you possibly can, but again, protect your squadrons. Don't, don't throw planes away. And the dive bombers, the dive bombers make great scouts, but they are very, very RNG based. Do not count on them for reliable damage. That's basically what that's kind of graphs up in a nutshell. Oh, and if you get the chance to use your secondaries in, a, in a, you know, built the ship out correctly, your secondary gunfight with a cruiser or something, that's not too shabby for you. You could probably beat a cruiser, but you don't want to be taking any battleships on the secondary fights. Those, their guns are still bigger than your hull wants to see. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. Be safe out there, and I'll catch you next time.